Okay, there's Brian is in there. Brian is there. Hey guys. Good morning. Good morning. Another beautiful day in paradise. Morning. Hey Richard, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Hey Rick, hey Brian. Hi Stephen, how are you? We're doing well. Blue sky somewhere, right? Uh, oh, there good is. Good morning. Uh, let's see, we can get started as soon as we have one more. Right, I'm not missing anyone. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, who's missing? Jason and Christy? Uh, it's like it's just me, Stephen, and Richard right now. Jason, Christy Dose, and Peter McEachern. Uh, Christy uh, Farantella did email she, me. She won't be able to attend today due to a family emergency. But I am so far still anticipating we would have a quorum. Anybody else been having problems with Verizon? Uh, Christy Kickham is waiting to get in. That text came through. Um, I do not see him in the waiting room. I'll let him know to please try again. Here he is. Oh, there he is. Allie, interestingly, that message popped up for me. I let him in, I'm not sure why. Oh, I moved you to the host rec. Oh, there you go. That's why. Hey, Christy, good morning. Good morning. Sorry about the delay. No worries. Um, I'm going to roll right into it. Uh, let's see here. So uh, we're winnowing down our 
our little good morning Charlie Baker speech. Apparently that seems to be the norm. So uh, good morning for the record, Stephen Welch, Chair of the Capital Program Committee. Uh, I'd like to confirm member access, Peter Kaiser. Here. Richard Hussey. Here. Christy Kickham. Here. Great, and obviously we can hear me. Um, staff, Brian Turbert. Here. Rick Sears. Here. Good morning, Libby, can we hear you? Hello. Yep. Okay, great, thanks. So this meeting is via Zoom video and audio broadcast on the YouTube's, uh, YouTube on the town's YouTube channel, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020. Uh, there's no mem with no member of the public having asked to speak, this particular meeting will not have uh, public comment. Uh, any material provided for the meeting uh, dur or during the meeting will, unless otherwise noted, be on the, available on the town's website. Uh, I'll introduce agenda and topics and speakers. Please remember to mute your Zoom audio until your name is called and let's direct discussion through the chair to avoid crosstalk and taking and make taking of minutes easier. Lastly, formal votes, if any, will be via roll call. With that said, uh, I'd like to uh, call this meeting of the Capital Program Committee to order. It's November 12th, shortly after 10 a.m. And could I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Great, uh, Peter, on your motion. Second. Uh, Christy. Yes, Richard. Yes. Excellent, myself. All right, uh, Rory work session. Uh, I'd like to actually get a, we're gonna just uh, take some liberties with the agenda. Uh, we have uh, Libby here with us this morning. She has some other stuff scheduled. So I'd like to move her up. Um, I don't anticipate any uh, objections to that. So Libby with that, what, uh, what I was hoping to do is maybe just um, touch base uh, on anything you think is relevant for the joint meeting coming up on the 17th. And then um, maybe, you know, spend five or 10 minutes, just a little back and forth discussion. Um, so with that, I'd give you the uh, opportunity if you think there's anything you wanna bring up. Um, sure, thank you very much. And thanks for taking me first. We have Board of Health at 1030. Um, in no particular order, and Brian and I have talked about this a couple of times and with Rick as well. We have town, town admin has, basically finished our Rory's. We haven't totally finished our, our other, any other prioritizations. And for Tuesday's meeting, I think we're gonna be looking to the Capcom to bring the other two boards, you know, just up to speed about what you've done so far, what's left to do, are we still on schedule? And potentially what Brian and I are hoping we can have is a, preliminary, don't fall in love with the numbers, free cash allocation recommendation. We have a good idea of what free cash is probably going to be. It is not certified today. Um, and we hesitate to put the numbers out that aren't certified, but I think we have a, a, a pretty firm idea. And we already know some of it is going to have to go to specific like prioritized items. One of them is Island Home operating one time. And there's a couple of other things like that that don't amount to a ton of money, but that do need to come from free cash. And then we'll have a number that we can apply to capital and some one-time EIRs, expense increase requests. So we are working on that and we hope to be able to, you know, unveil it on Tuesday. But I don't think it's going to be a big surprise to anybody. And, it, and th this is something we have talked about. We, I think Capcom and, and us maybe talked about this early on in, in the fiscal 22 planning process to be able to have those numbers earlier. Because um, normally I think we don't even get to this till December or sometimes even January. December certainly at the earliest. So hopefully we're a little earlier on that. Brian, Rick, uh, there's two things also that Brian is going to mention to you that have come up since the, of course, since um, your process started that you haven't heard very much about yet. One of them you have, and the other we're still firming up, but I'll let Brian explain what they are and jump in if need be. And one of them is not going to surprise you at all, um, I don't think. But Rick and Brian, is there anything that I didn't mention just now that we would want to mention? No, I mean, 
I, as you saw, um, I'm right on the Capitol Committee saw and Libby, we were copied on it. Rick did send all of the information to everybody that will be participating in the meeting on that joint meeting on Tuesday for um, their review. So I think the only things that we may kind of give everybody a very brief update on or a first pass at is, is as Libby said, was really relative to very, very, very high level preliminary um, discussion about the free cash and what the potential allocation might look like, um, including what we might be able to allocate towards the 1% the in the tax rate as well. Um, but I think that's all for the meeting that I, that I recall that we've talked about or, or how the meeting would go. Rick, anything that you can think of? No, I think you guys, I think you both covered it, what we have. So Ryan, meeting. you want to sure. mention these other two things? Uh, absolutely. I'll mention a few other things. Um, so the one that probably is not a surprise to everybody, but given the, at the rate that the town is progressing through, um, its evaluation and risk assessment, um, we're going to have to bring forward a discussion with Capcom on a allocation, which is unknown at this point, um, but a discussion about a capital project for PFOS, um, there's been some money that we've been talked about put into the operating budget to handle some type of administrative work that we may have to do with it. But um, correct me if I'm wrong, Libby, I think that testing will eventually begin sometime before the end of the year. Is that something that's been discussed or? Uh, yes, I think that is the plan, I, but I'm not sure about testing, not possibly. We're, we're right at the very beginning stages of an island-wide risk assessment. Right. And that's going to look at places where PFAS might be either originating from or somehow be like a contaminant. And, and I think our, our concern is if that happens and we, we expect that it may, we're going to have to deal with it right away in, in some manner. And we have no idea right now what, what deal with it means. Does it mean constructing a facility to treat PFAS as has been done in other municipalities? Um, more for public water supply issues. We don't have that, but we may have areas that need to be treated and that can be extremely costly because this, not to get deep into it, but soil, for example, may have to be removed and it's a challenge to find a location to take it to, to be disposed of. There's no place in Massachusetts that takes that kind of material. And places in the United States that will accept it are, I guess, becoming uh, challenging. Um, so there's that whole situation with PFAS. Um, we are we're funding um, through a couple different mechanisms, um, some beginning design work for um, the changing of the intersection at Francis and Union Street, uh, which is gonna have to have further funding for implementation of those direct design recs. And since this project seems to be um, high on the priority list, we're gonna have to come before you with um, a general discussion about that and a very preliminary number that may have to be funded um, to, to accommodate some of that. Uh, one of the other things that the manager and I, yes. Can I interrupt? I'm sorry, I missed the headline on that. What was the first part of that sentence? Francis and Washington Street and, Fran and Union Street, excuse me. Okay, Francis, I wasn't very understood. Fran Thank Fran you. Francis, Libby? I forget. Yeah, Francis and yeah. Washington. Uh, yes. So, um, as you know, there's been discussion about widening the corner. And so that's what the, the preliminary work that the DPW director is doing through his budget for des initial design is is um, is being undertaken, so we will need potential funding for that, possibly in fiscal 22, depending on how rapidly that moves. One of the other things that the manager and I have been discussing, um, as the committee is well aware of, because we've had many discussions about this, um, we've been allocating, or we had allocated in fiscal 20, and had intended to allocate in fiscal 21, a million dollars to various facility line items to be able to do uh, facility updates and upgrades um, to the municipal owned buildings. I've broached the idea um, 
given the length of time that it takes to build up any reasonable amount of money by funding at a million dollars a year um, for the facilities department to undertake some of these and given the, the wide disparity in costs that we sometimes encounter with these, I've had a discussion with the manager about potentially allocating um, $750,000 a year to a debt service borrowing, which would allow us just as a discussion point, if we were to do it in fiscal 20 at the annual town meeting in fiscal 21, we would authorize a borrowing um, for a set amount that we would calculate based on the prescribed a dollar amount that we would funding every year in debt service for it. And what it would do is it would give us the ability upfront to have access to capital to be able to update and to make um, the facility improvements and renovations that we need to without having to potentially stop projects because the bids come in substantially more than we thought. And now we have to wait another year or two in a cycle to get the continue to get the funding, which only pushes and delays us out. I Essentially, we I have an idea of what we could borrow. It would potentially be anywhere between roughly given the rates right now between six and a half to 6.9 million of an authorization. That does not mean a, that the town would run out and borrow $6.9 million today to start doing facilities work. The, the approach that I've taken with the manager is that the facilities department would identify a set number of projects that they would like to get, that they can get done in a year. And that would be the list that gets done and utilizes that funding. And it would be a list that we would have to work in how we would present it to Capcom but it'd be a list in a, in a projects that would be approved by the manager. And the intent is that we could finish them within a year so that we could move, get them done and move on. One of the things that I, when I look at what the DPW director is asking for this year is 4.5 million and then out years is, is still substantially a lot of money. Funding it at a million dollars a year just is not gonna get us to a point where we can actually do some of the work that we need to and continue to do. Um, as I said in the beginning, if a bid comes in over, it essentially means we have to find it in other articles that are similar in, in the way that they were set up and then take money from that article to continue to move on. And it just, it feels and seems like this would be a better approach if we can design the right parameters about how, parameters around how to use it and how to proceed with it. Um, so it's something that we are in beginning phases of, but it's also something that would impact, I think, um, Mr. Chairman, your recommendations if we were to consider advancing this in fiscal 21. Um, I'm not saying that we ultimately are going to advance it in fiscal 21, but it's a discussion as we identify the projects and look at funding sources as a potential opportunity to, to actually make a, a dent in the work that is outstanding that needs to get done to maintain the facilities. Thank you, Brian, that's helpful. Um, <laughs> any, any others? Any other, just in that, terms of updates um, and thoughts? Uh, not from me. I'll, I don't know if the town manager has more. I think that was it. Okay, um, so, and just sort of organizing the meeting for um, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. So I just wanna, uh, Christy, I'll recognize you just a second. Uh, I just wanna make sure I understand. Um, one, obviously we appreciate all this information. There's a lot here. Uh, it's gonna be involved discussion and so on and so forth. Um, <laughs> we might, and it'd probably be good to field a couple of quick questions here just for us to get a better understanding of me for members' understandings. Um, the bigger, broader question I have, these are all items you'll be mentioning at the joint meeting, or these are a mix of things that you're updating us on, some of which will be mentioned at the meeting? Good question. I think we were kind of thinking we'd mention them at the meeting, but we wanted to run them by you first to get your feedback on that. Um, yeah. We don't have to. No, I think um, it could certainly be a, a subsequent update to the other two boards. Um, Libby, I actually think it might be a good idea to mention it. Uh, I would suggest just with respect to structuring and organizing the meeting that this could come in after the idea is brought up that you will be doing a high level preliminary free cash analysis, analysis and recommendation because then it'll give people an understanding of what else might be coming. Um, so I think that would be helpful. I think it also it's gonna plug, a, plug some time because uh, you know the FY22 requests are all previous, mostly previous year requests. So I don't know that there's gonna be much meat of discussion on any of those. There may be, I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you're right. Does that? And and I think it would uh, for Capcom. I think it'll be helpful. For I see this as a good opportunity for us all, to, us all being the members, to get a frame of reference on how select board members and FinCom members are looking at some of these things. So if you if if it's brought up and there's some discussion, I think it would be helpful. So I'm good with that. And maybe you and I could just spend five minutes and and coordinate a little more. I don't mind if we free free form it either. Uh, Christy, you had a question. I did, uh, Brian. About as to the uh, facilities funding, um, you would mention that in this initial uh, uh, amount, you would a lot maybe seven hundred and fifty thousand. If you think we're behind a little bit, we want to uh, get caught up. Would it be wise to maybe fund that at one point five? Maybe just double it this initial year. Any thoughts? Well, so. The 750 would be actually wouldn't have to be funded this year if we choose to go down this road because at the annual 2021 annual town meeting we would do the borrowing authorization for the lump sum that I've talked about and just use 6.5 million for this discussion. There'd be no payment due until next year um, that I would actually have to worry about starting to make any um, payments against that obligation and it most likely wouldn't be a full 750,000 initially because we wouldn't borrow all 6.9 million. I mean, the intent really is, one of the intents of this is to give the ability to actually start a project and fund it and get it completed. So as I had mentioned, one of the thoughts that I had presented to the manager is that the facilities department give the manager a realistic list of what could be done in a year. And that's what we would actually focus on so the 750,000 that we're talking about committing is just to pay the debt service over a 10 year period on that initial borrowing. So if we were to do this, we wouldn't even have to allocate any free cash this year. We would be able to start allocating next year. Um, so it would be, we would be funding six point, essentially would be funding $6.9 million worth of um, capital or infrastructure improvement and facilities over a period of time. And then we would pay it back over that 10 year period that um, we would do. So I would not have to fund anything in that initial this year initially, but they would still have access to the money after town meeting to start. Yeah. So, so based on debt service. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Brian, uh, anyone, uh, any other, just to give the meeting some structure, any other questions for Brian on this topic at this point? Okay. Brian, I have a couple. Um, it sounds as if you're, I'm not certain, but it sounds as if this could be approached one of two ways is either it's a set amount that's that would be approved, authorized, submitted for authorization for borrowing. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking at this as being like a revolver uh, or is it a set amount that will be put out and then can be accessed? We would then receive the funds and have them available. Or is this something that we would draw, we would go out to the market on an as needed basis did, there's, okay. that's one part of the question. Okay. Um, Go ahead. So to answer that, we would have access to the full borrowing after if town meeting were to approve it. We wouldn't. We would borrow on an as needed basis with a ban temporarily, um, which we could, if that was less than seven hundred fifty thousand annually, we could pay that down, or we could permanently borrow it if rates were more favorably. But it's not something that I'm going to run out and borrow all of it at once. That's never what we do. Right. And then this is anticipated, just again, for clarity, this is anticipated to be, in a sense, a replacement or a, an alternate to free cash at this point and for the near future. Um, but it's not, and in, in, in specifically for facilities related. It is, it's intended to, um, I guess, for lack of a better word, speed up the process of allocating a small amount every year and then having to wait a few years to get it to build up a number to get a project done. Um, so it's um, it's a, but it is only intended for facilities now, you know, conceivably, if this works and we can manage this correctly, which I have no doubt that we can then it conceivably could work for some of the other items that have we we have multiple um, multiple years of work to to catch up on or, or to bring up to, um, to, to a better standard. So it's, it's starting with one area and say, can we manage this? How does it look? How do we interact with um, Capcom on it so that they're aware of what's going on? And 
is it something that we think will be um, will produce a better result than I think we all agree we may be producing right now with the, the limited funds that we have to, to allocate to everything. Okay, so subject to sets of controls with respect to obviously select board determinations, town manager, finance, inputs, Capcom yes. recommendation, FinCom recommendations, this would all be structured such that there could be a drawdown for facilities, projects, and facility projects, uh, perhaps like that were overage or needed some reaccounting. Is um, that a correct assumption? Some of them that are in a holding pattern right now because they potentially need supplemental funding. Yeah. But realistically, um, because I know Capcom has asked this before, you know, how many can you get done in a year? Realistically, this is designed to really force us to look at the projects and realistically determine what we can complete in a specific time period and then move on when those are completed so that we're producing results along the way. This isn't done so that we can just have the money and start them and not really get anything done. It's designed in a way that gives facilities the opportunity to get projects started and finished and then move on to the next, the next set of them. Okay, thank you. That's helpful information, at least for me, I, I think. Um, Libby on, and Brian, I guess just on this higher level preliminary free cash number, uh, you know, there's been, there's historically been tension about the ideas of when a Capcom report comes in and our recommendations. Fundamentally, what this number is going to do is provide information that helps to shape and form uh, recommendations, but nothing is going to really substantially change until we have information from the state to make final numbers, correct? I see you texting there. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm actually doing the calculator number real quick in my head. And no, I met Libby. Oh, Go ahead, Libby. I'm trying to find out from Brian. Oh, <laughs> um, realistically, I mean, I, we've got the number from them to review and they were there. We've told them that we think it's correct. So I don't, it's not going to substantially change for the number that I've discussed with the town manager in but, any material way, but we don't want to go with it until the state has put their signature on it. Yeah. Right. And then subject to that, sorry, Libby, but because I'll have you answer this one too, if you can. Subject to that, there are other decisions that need to be made, obviously, which are what is a cap, what will be a capital exclusion, what isn't a capital exclusion, uh, what would be an override, what isn't, all of which can fundamentally be formed and shaped in December, but we won't know that information until early January, correct? Well, um, actually, now that you mentioned that part of it, and that's a good point to bring up, I think Brian and I might be able to work that in preliminarily into, um, well, I'm sort of talking out loud here, thinking out loud was going to say, work that into this free cash allocation for Tuesday, but we won't really know exactly which from you all, which projects are going to be recommended or not. We no. could do a, a kind of a quick and dirty, if we approved all the ones we're saying, for example, like X, X and X would be capital ex exclusions, Y and Z would be debt exclusions. I mean, some of them we know are going to be either or and um but we will i'm trying to think of the timeline um can i suggest can i make a suggestion yeah go ahead i i think it's it's work it's things that are going to change perhaps and it's work today's thursday to tuesday is the meeting and getting the information out to people in advance so that they can ask questions or form, you know, formulate comments. I, it's up to you, but I would suggest don't put yourself through it. Um, okay. yeah, that's probably a better idea. Uh, um, and once we're further with you all, with your, um, um, you know, prioritizations, that's probably a discussion we would have with you, but we could let them know at least that obviously as in prior years, some of these capital items because of their amounts would, and their nature would be capital exclusions and some would be debt exclusions. Sure. Okay. So just we're giving them a general structure, but not getting yeah. into too much detail because the detail could change. Yeah. Okay. Which exactly. makes sense to me too. Okay. 
Um, any other questions uh, for Libby while she's here? She's got a Board of Health meeting in about 32 seconds. Hard break. Libby, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you guys. And I'm, I really um, missed you. I, well, I feel really terrible that I on t every Thursday at 10 o'clock, I feel a um, very deep pang of loneliness yeah. <laughs> and um, shame. Uh, and I'm very sorry that I haven't been able, be able to come to more meetings. But Well, that's totally unnecessary we appreciate everything you're doing thanks but for you're, being on, you're on, on my mind constantly yes <laughs> hopefully in a good way thanks in Libby. Good way, yes thank you guys okay bye-bye later okay guys are there any quick uh any other questions they don't have to be quick for brian on any of these uh the pfos uh the high level preliminary on um free cash or the francis and washington no uh, Richard and then Chris. Just a quick question on the Francis and Union. Um, that was how many years ago was that widened? Um, not a, we're going to widen it again, I guess. Is that well? No, because you're going to. The intent is to do um, the intersection of Washington and Francis Street to mirror oh, Washington. So, it, uh, I got it. I got it. So, I mean, it ends at Francis and Union where it was got widened. It. Before. Okay, I've got that. Because if everybody remembers, we in joint with the land bank acquired that property at the corner. Was it the NISDA property? Some of that to be able to do that section. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Christy? Brian, as to the PFAS, I'm just curious if uh, you're getting what, um, what guidance you're getting along the way. I mean, what, what um, are there any like state agencies or the feds helping you along the way uh, give guidance? Or are we just sort of winging it? We are not winging it. Um, we have two contracts currently, the town does with uh, the engineering firm CDM Smith, who is A, doing our, they're doing the initial risk assessment um, and they're working with um, not only the DPW director, but um, Chuck Larson, who is um, overseeing this project for us. Um, and I know that they've had discussions and consultations with the EP about where what we're doing and and how we're proceeding. Um, we also have a secondary contract with uh, CDM Smith that was approved last week, which would tack on for um, any additional work that would need to be done as a result of the initial risk assessment that they're starting. So um, we're taking a very measured and um, reasoned approach to be able to do this. So we are certainly not winging this one at all. It's, um, it's a big project and there's a lot of um, obviously publicity with everything, you know, that the airport has already done. So um, we're in constant communications with not only CDM Smith, but Chuck is in, we're in constant communications with DE, the regional office for DEP as well. So it's not something that we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants on. Christy? I could have chose a better word than winging it. That's okay. No, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, Brian, I guess I'm just going to ask because I won't get a chance to otherwise. I mean, is there, I know you have no idea here, but this seems like a very far wide, far and, and deep, no pun intended with respect to the water reaching issue. Um, I mean, is there any chance that the state or the Fed in terms of discussions you're hearing will be coming in with some type of a fund like uh, like a brownfields approach. I mean, I'm not asking you if there's an Aaron Brockovich out there who's going to come in and save everyone, but are you hearing any, because how would we know, but are you, is there any discussion in the circles of discussion that there will be some type of state or federal relief, or is it just too soon for that? I, I think at this point, it realistically is too soon for that, um, to be honest with you. Um, and I haven't been involved in every discussion, so there could have been discussions about it that I wasn't involved in, but in anything I've been involved in, it really is, it's very early in the process, I think, for everyone. So um, whether the state or the feds decide that would step in and say, we're going to deal with this or we're going to cover it for communities, I, it hasn't been um, explicitly discussed or acknowledged that that's even a potential at this point. And then uh, speaking, thank you. And speaking, you know, looking at timelines associated with the types of funding that could be required for these types of projects, given the, uh, well, I won't get into the 
the thresholds and whether scientifically they make sense or not. Uh, but the dollar numbers are certainly high. Um, is are there are there any uh, obligations within the financial instruments that the town will undertake that would prohibit a, a refinancing of some sort? If, for instance, in ten years, no, five the, years, no, all the bonds are built in with call dates. Okay, so, um, we would they this wouldn't if we went to market to sell a bond it, it's a general obligation bond so it wouldn't it wouldn't um there's no expectation that the the use of the funds for whatever project would impact our ability to borrow it or structure the debt or pay off early with state or federal funds. Uh, well we can't ever pay off early once we once we enter into a general long-term obligation we can do a refunding which essentially buys the debt down for and refinances at a lower rate. If there were ever any funds, i.e. Um, state or federal, we would receive them and then hold them in a, a reserve account that would be applied against the debt until the point if we if a refunding window was in the future until that refunding window and we could then buy down that debt and only refinance the difference. If it was after a refunding availability, we would have to hold it and just use it to pay pay against the debt. We we don't have the opportunity like you have on a mortgage to be, to pay it down at any point in time. We we once we have the schedule, the investors all purchase the debt and assume that in their calculations that they're going to receive it on that schedule. Um, so we can't pay it off early. Okay, yeah, that was the thrust of it. Is is and obviously none of us have a crystal ball to know. <laughs> whether the state or fed will step in, but I was just kind of curious. But I don't, I don't think that um, there's anything that would impact our ability to finance the projects in the bond market at this point. Yeah, okay, no, that, that's helpful, thank you. Okay, great, any other questions on these uh, topics? Um, uh, the only other thing is uh, if, uh, Rick, I presume you had emailed uh, stuff out to FinCom and Select Board. Brian, did I hear you say that that had already gone out? It went out last. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rick. Was it two when Monday or Tuesday? I think it was. When, I did, when it when it when you received it, Stephen, it was everybody was addressed. Everybody that is at Tuesday's meeting was on the email. Okay. Can I get a copy? Because I don't believe I got a packet. Okay. Did the did the rest of you on the call? Sorry. Yeah. Richard Christie. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a meeting announcement or something? No. Well, sorry. Yeah, what I packed out. Rick sent all of the documents that we had discussed. Um, sending to everybody, select board, FinCom, and Capcom, so that you yeah. all have them in advance to review. I don't believe I received it, but if you wouldn't mind resending it, Rick, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, great. So, guys, we're going to uh, shift gears over to Rory's. We're um, one thing I don't have, Brian, I'll mention to you just because it'll be simpler. I don't currently have the ability to see who and who has not turned in uh, Rory's. Okay. And that um, will be something we're gonna need, you know, not tomorrow, but, you know, over the course of the next couple of meetings. Okay. Uh, once I have to start sending people reminders, cause there's several that we have two of seven in, uh, several we have only three of seven in uh, and a less than a handful of fours and one with six. And uh, by the way, that's the next topic. I just, the sixth, the one we have six in is the flooring, facility flooring replacement at Island Home. So that is not actually one that we're doing this year. Um, and I guess what I wanted to do was, Rick, if you wouldn't mind, please, uh, through Brian, of course, if you could update the list of actual requests. And I think you sent one out uh, under the heading of similar or the like of Rory's. Uh, it was earlier in the process. And it's basically a list of which projects we're actually working on uh, in terms of reviewing. Um, or I guess we could just repurpose the FY22 request PDF you sent out. So, um... I thought I thought what a couple couple points. I thought that you, as a committee, were only updating, doing Rory's on projects that have a 2020 date. Yeah, all I'm saying, correct. And all Which I'm saying is, is do we have a list of of all the 
20 FY 22 requests. Yes, somewhere. that's what that's what I sent. That's what I sent last week to in the PDF. There were two. One was the 22 requests. The other was the, the 10 year SIP. And the third document was the the previous select board um, presentation. OK, I, great. So those were I, your, at your request. No, that's awesome. I just wanted to check. I was uh, I was thinking if we had a spreadsheet, it might be easier just to use because uh, if we had a spreadsheet just listing the actual FY22 request, it might be easier for members to use when they're filling out the RORIs, but it's not critical. We have the PDF right. that lists them and we can print it out and cross them off as we fill in the individual requests. Send it to you directly after the meeting. To everyone. All right, that's Thank awesome. You. Thank you very much. Um, that will also help me because I, I want to make sure, you know, team approach that all the requests that you're sending, we're seeing and vice versa. Stephen, can I ask one more question? So you said you can't see the other Rory's or you can't see who, what, I, I thought oh, we I, agreed that you had received that. Yeah. So what I have for Rory review capability is I can see in the capital request forms list, the number. So the status of for instance, two of seven Rory's complete. When I go into a particular request, I can see the team inputs, but I don't, there's not a uh, view where I can see what, who submitted what without clicking through 55 requests. Each time I need to send someone a reminder. So if, for instance, two of seven have completed the AIP projects, I don't see who they are until I click in. So next week, three people. So in order to understand who has not completed them, I would need to every time someone updates a Rory and that number changes, click in to see. You need a report. Oh, yeah, and we can take, I'm sorry guys, we can take this offline. I just, it, it's, it's not okay. critical today, but it's something that's important. Um, what I was hoping to do was just spend a little bit of time and, uh, noting that there aren't a lot of Rory's completed, um, acknowledging that we have done, you know, all these Rory's last year, almost all these Rory's, uh, just to see if there's any particular questions about any particular projects so that uh, if someone wanted some additional information, they could get it in the group setting. And if it wasn't information we had as members uh, we had Brian and Rick here, maybe they could answer it. And if not, they could run it through the system. So um, I don't know, you know, if we just want to do a free form, if there's anyone who has particular questions on a particular request, or if you just literally want me to run down the list. And if you have a question, ask it. And if not, we'll move on. Um, not as much utility as I had hoped in this meeting, I'll say without full membership, because if the other three members have questions. Uh, obviously, um, you know we, we, we're not here to help. They're not here for us to help them, and vice versa. But you know, we do what we can. Everyone has got a has got a, a life. Um, thoughts on how to proceed, Christy? Uh, Stephen, I was just. I do have some that I still need to do, but I wanted to check and see if um, uh, completion of these would help in any way for the joint meeting. Is there any sort of uh, scenario you're going to use the Rory's for for that meeting? No, we won't collate. Thank you, Christy. Uh, we won't collate any of this information. Uh, we, we need to be able to collate it for our up down list in mid December. And um, this meeting and the next meeting will really be uh, an opportunity for us to have this type of discussion towards finalizing these. Uh, we're going to need some time to review them as a group and as we have in the past and have discussion in order to make our up down list uh, towards final recommendations, but nothing for the joint meeting. Um, go ahead, Christy. Uh, okay, with that said, then is there, is there any way to, um, is there any way to, it might skew things, but to make, uh, if someone doesn't get their Rory's completed in an allotted time or by a date, that um, that their submissions just don't count, or does that is that going to skew things? Uh, I'm just trying to figure out sort of an incentive to sort of pe get people to move along. That, that includes me. Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, uh, Guinness usually works for me. 
Um, no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, I sat down, uh, I organized myself perhaps a little different than other people, but I sat down and I did them in, uh, I'm sad to admit, almost an a hour and a half. Uh, it took longer than I had hoped. And uh, certainly it felt like longer than if we had been doing them as we went. But uh, this year we really kind of stacked up departments and we, you know, in part, we stacked up departments because we'd already done these requests, we'd already reviewed these requests. And because of that, we didn't really take the time to uh, review and do Rory's at each meeting. And I think that uh, in retrospect, I would say, no, let's not do it that way. Um, but, you know, I, I, I didn't anticipate that there would be an issue getting Rory's completed. I think that there may be, and we need as a committee to step up and get them done. Yeah, please. Just a, just a programming question. I, I know I had mentioned this before, but um, really no excuse, but is there some way maybe next season that um, we can find some way to either flag or highlight uh, uh, ones that we've completed um, because as you say, you do go through and you have to click on them to know if you've done them or not. Um, and it would be much more advantageous uh, uh, to have some, some idea of what you've done um, to then show what you haven't done. Because right now we, we have to go through each one to remind ourselves if we've done it, other than putting a list on the side of our, our table here next to our computer and just check them off. Um, but it's just... Uh, uh, programming question that um, I think would help uh, and encourage people to get these done sooner. Sure, I'll answer and then I'll let Brian. Uh, I think that's a good idea and it's important because I mean some of this is just like psychological. You're looking at the workload and it's in front of you and simplicity and having it just in one place and if they're not in there maybe there's a view uh, available for each person as to what they've completed or a print, a report, or something along those lines. Um, I think programmatically it can be done. I think with respect to uh, priorities, it will. it's important that people feel, not feel overloaded, so they're doing this. I think part of that is structuring the environment. So we're doing them at each meeting. Um, and if you get behind, you're a little behind versus it's the end of the season and you've got some 54, 53 requests to do. Uh, and in, in that context, the priority is, is there some way to, to approach this? Look, if the priority is fundamental changes to information and how it's managed, that would be of a larger benefit than making it feel like less work. I think that we can, I would go for the first and the less work would be for now, we can, we, we help to address it by doing each Rory after the, at each relative department's meeting. Um, Brian, do you have, uh, Christy and then Brian. Sorry, sorry, one more thing. Uh, okay, with that said, then maybe, uh, maybe on each meeting, we uh, discuss the percentages from the previous meeting yeah. in, in Rory's. And this way, um, you need to do your work before each meeting and it allows us to get them done uh, timely. Yeah, actually, Christy, I think that's a great idea. Not only will it give everyone an opportunity to um, be reminded, but it will uh, it'll give people an opportunity to have questions answered uh, while the information is fresh in all our minds from the previous meeting. Brian, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I was just going to follow up on your comments um, and just say that the, the uh, when we look at them, I, obviously, there's an awful lot of Rory's in all the Capcom members. And I think Rick and I have talked about working with um, the developer to come up with a way to, um, to to solve this problem. So you are only seeing what you haven't completed yet or so that you could generate a report that would show what you have open in some way. Um, and it's on, it's just admittedly, the rush was to A, to figure out how to get the select board and FinCom access so that we could make this easier um, for everyone that's, you know, for the joint meetings and some other minor changes that we had to get to make this to, to, to you know, continue um, the improvement. So that's on the list of things that we are gonna kind of address in the next round of improvements that we, or next 
large scale improvements that we make. So I would envision, quite frankly, that it'll be done before next seasons of Capcom, but it's not something that I've focused on too hard right now. But it is something on our list to, to improve. Thanks. And just so we get some immediate feedback on that, uh, guys, what do you think of the ability just to hit print Rory report and it tells you what you've completed and what you haven't? Because if, if they, my concern is if they go away when we finish them, the <laughs> concept we've discussed previously, which is a save and an edit button, uh, the edit concept was that if we wanted to go in and change things, if they go away within the program in terms of our interface, our visual interface, that will be more difficult. So any thoughts on, do, do we want at some point in the future, this is our wish list, the ability to edit, because that I think will drive the other solution. And the report might be something we get sooner than the ability to edit. Mm -hmm. Christy? Well, there's a point to where you keep betting, it's gonna keep, uh, I mean, sometimes your initial uh, thoughts on uh, a request are the most honest. Um, uh, I have changed Rory scores based on discussion and uh, thinking differently after a discussion. Oh, sorry about that. It's all right. Uh, so anyway, it was just, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's nice to have them available to edit, but uh, <clears throat> you know, then things are going to constantly evolve, and sometimes it's nice to have some firm numbers. Sure. No, I get you, uh, Peter. Yeah, I I kind of agree. I mean, I think there there might be some one-off cases where we get additional information at a later date from a um, department head, um, and assuming that maybe we already completed a Rory without that information, it would be nice to be able to go back, but. I wouldn't, you know, put too much time or, or effort into it if it seems like it might not be worth the, the few amount of times that we go back and don't trust our initial judgment. Um, I don't know how many people are going back, you know, multiple, multiple times because they thought through it overnight and couldn't sleep and then woke up in the morning and went back and changed things, you know, 0.15% or something like that. So yeah. I, I guess kind of the cost benefit and how long we wait and how important it is. Thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, hope no one is uh, losing sleep over that extra percentage and a half or two, or even five or 10. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have a strong feeling either way. I think the ability to edit is convenience. And it is one that I think may come more into focus as we, if we initiate, when we initiate Christie's suggestion, which is that we'll have, uh, we'll review the previous meetings uh, inputs, the percentages as a group, so the team view. And I think that will probably create some discussion about information that we may or may not have uh, interpreted and then we may wanna edit. Okay, so I think we beat that to death for now. Um, certainly a report would be great. And at this point, it's something that would be for the next cycle. Um, in terms of actual Rory's outstanding, are there questions? Is there any thoughts on how to maybe approach uh, this? Maybe not at this meeting, but at the next meeting, uh, Richard? Um, I'll commit to getting all of mine in by Monday. Okay. I, I haven't done any, so I've been bad, but I'll get them done I'm, by Monday. I'm, I'm right to, there with Richard, so. All right, and you I, have until Thursday. I'm not as bad as Richard or Peter, but I will have mine done as well. <laughs> All right, uh, sooner is better because then it'll be done. But uh, if it's if it's done earlier, um, we can move up uh, our discussions to more substantive matters about the actual percentages and so on and so forth versus asking and answering questions about particular requests. So I think what we'll do for next meeting is we'll anticipate, uh, perhaps brief, but we'll anticipate it will be a continuance of the Rory workshop so that if anyone has questions on a particular request, they can bring them up at the meeting uh, in hopes of getting these completed. Christy? I will say uh, last year when we discussed percentages, I think it's very, very, uh, it was very helpful uh, and I think productive uh, to, uh, to me as a committee member to listen to how everyone uh, felt about uh, certain uh, items. Um, 
So, you know, if that happens, uh, I would, I would, I would like that. Thanks, Christy. Yeah, I think it was a missed opportunity this season. Uh, I think, you know, COVID obviously is, we're all still to some extent in a COVID fog uh, with everything else going on in our lives and having done the requests once already. So um, yeah, I, I think it's a good point and one that we uh, will take up for sure. Okay. Um, let me see here, Rory Q&A. So next week we'll continue Rory Q&A and um, I'll just send out a quick email to everyone so they're aware that this is the time to get their questions answered so we can complete. Richard? Uh, so next Thursday, we're at 10 o'clock and then at one, right? Uh, Tuesday at one. I'm sorry, Tuesday at one. Tuesday the 17th at 1 p.m. Okay. Good. By the way, this is a great segue into, uh, wait, I wanna, before I segue into data next meeting, I'm just curious, Rick, have you had anyone uh, have the Rick tutorials been ro rolling out left and right or no one's taking you up on it? It's been busy. I've done exactly that many. <laughs> um, I was thinking that maybe people found the print report button and they were able to see all the information in one place and then they didn't need to get your tutorial, but uh, that may be a hopeful thought. Um, all right, thanks for the update. Uh, data next meeting is uh, Tuesday, the 17th at 1 p.m. That'll be the joint meeting. And as Libby just kind of outlined, we'll give a quick update on our, our process, our uh, status. And, um, you know, we're basically going to be on our schedule and uh, we will answer any uh, process related questions on FY22 requests. Uh, the, it will fall to, uh, I probably, uh, Rick or Brian, uh, Rick being in the trenches on these requests, if there's a material or substantive question on a particular request that someone has, um, so representing the town's position on a, on an F650 or something. Um, and then we'll talk about the broader, uh, more recent kind of funding, uh, potentials that are coming up, unfortunately. Uh, that will be, and then Thursday, November 19th at 10 a.m. Any questions? Comments going into the joint meeting? Any hopes, aspirations about the results? Christy? We'll just, we'll get an invite, I, I presume. We haven't got it yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Richard, did you? I'd just like to thank uh, Rick for the uh, preparation materials. I think they're spot on, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rick, echo that for sure. Um, all right, so we have at this point uh, minutes to re, uh, we've got minutes under review for approval at the next meeting. They are, I'll just call them out, October 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd and 29th. And um, other than that, we are at 1057 entertaining, oh, Rick. You're muted, Rick. There you go. I'm just checking the meeting invite. It has gone out to, um, uh, I'm just making sure it's gone out to everyone. Richard has it. Yeah, you, you've all received the meeting invite for Tuesday. That came from Erica, correct? That's, that's correct. Okay, Richard, you, maybe if you didn't get it or if you didn't see it, it's because- Robin, The meeting invite actually will be forwarded to you when it's created because I think they're using Zoom webinar since it's three and that usually gets forwarded the day before or the morning of the meeting and it comes from panelists at town of Nantucket. Okay so what we received was a calendar item from calendar our guy and we'll get the invite in. the day of the meeting. Yes. Okay gotcha. Security and all that stuff. Yes. All right so now at 10 58 a.m uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. All right. Uh, on the motion, Peter. Aye. Christy. Aye. Richard, on your motion. Aye. And myself, aye. Hey, thanks everybody, and thanks again, Rick and Brian. Thank you all. Thank Have you. A good <laughs> thanks, guys. Take care. Take care.